I got a really, really bad pitch recently. So let's dive into why this pitch was so offensively bad and how to avoid pitches this bad when you're trying to earn media features. Are you tired of the endless stream of fantasy marketing and vanity metrics? Yeah, so am I. My name is James Patrick, and I'm an internationally published photographer, media specialist, and marketing strategist. I'm also a student of professional development, and like you, I've been left frustrated by all of this influencer-driven generic advice making us think that we are just one course, conference, or manifestation away from the life of our dreams. We need to cut through this crap and move beyond the posturing, beyond the facade, beyond the image to take real action on the real work that will create the real results. This is the Beyond the Image podcast. So I get a lot of pitches for individuals interested in either being a guest on the podcast, maybe they want to uh, contribute or be featured in one of the magazines, uh, maybe they're looking to contribute to our digital network. Um, so the point is, is I'm getting several pitches a day uh, for a variety of different things, and it could be difficult to try to navigate through a lot of these pitches um, simply because my job as a podcast host or um, my job as a magazine publisher or even, you know, extend this into like uh, my magazine's department, like my editor, creative director, their primary job is not to have to read pitches all day long. They have content to produce. They have to um, deliver content to our audiences. As, as a podcast host, my job is to serve you, my audience. And secondary to that job is... Well, occasionally I have to sift through these pitches to see if there's any potential guests or contributors who would be worthwhile to my audience. And that's the key right there. I have to find individuals who are worthwhile to my audience. It does not serve me. It does me no good to put someone on my show who does not benefit you, my audience, because, well, you might not listen to the show again. And it's so hard to get a listener to begin with. And it's nearly impossible to gain a listener back if you've lost them. So it's important that we as publishers understand our role. Our role is to provide great content for our audiences. And thus, when we're getting pitches from individuals or from publicists, we have to really quickly decide, is this person right for our audience? Yes or no. And if it's yes, we explore further. And if it's no, well, that's kind of where it stops right there. So mind you, we're getting lots of these pitches. When a pitch comes in like this, and those watching the video of this can see how intensely long this pitch is and how daunting it is to even think about trying to read it. For, for my audio listeners, I'll just tell you that this is very, very long. I mean, if I were to print this out, this would take up a full page in 10 point font. Um, now, the thing that I'm going to point out, I'm, I, I won't even bother reading this because the whole thing is just kind of a resume or a bio. Like they achieved this, they were able to accomplish this, they were rewarded with this, they received this, they successfully did this, so on and so forth for an entire page. That is a lot to digest. And at no point in this did they ever say what they can speak on, what they can be interviewed about, what they can contribute to anything. I mean, the closest they got, the closest they got was this right here. It says specializations, business, entrepreneurship. Okay. Uh, so what's the topic? I just interview you, say, well, let's come on the podcast and let's just talk about business. Let's just talk about entrepreneurship. If I titled this podcast, you know, beyond the image episode, you know, 400, whatever, uh, topic business, is that going to compel you to want to listen to this episode or to want to 
dive into this contest content excuse me we're talking about entrepreneurship today we're talking about systems and processes that that was another one of the bullet points these are not topics these are i mean at, at, at best categories but nowhere in this massive long pitch did there uh appear any resemblance of here's a topic i want to position in front of your audience now this individual was pitching via publicist and this publicist was following up fairly often i think you know let's just say once a week uh which is fine that doesn't bother me uh and i would even encourage individuals follow up because i might not see something even if i got that really long pitch but if a follow-up was just like, hey, they want to come on your show to talk about this topic, and this is why we want think this topic is important. All right, great. The follow-up worked. But the follow-ups were really futile and just said, hey, just following up to see what you think. That's not a really good follow-up. A good follow-up would be to add more context to your pitch, like here's why this idea is important, or to shift the content of your pitch. Hey, if that idea doesn't work, here's another idea for you. So context or content. Um, they weren't any of that. And at some point, I mean, this, this was the best part. And this is why this pitch was so nefariously awful. I got this message. This is your final chance to have him on as a guest on your podcast. Get back to me so I can arrange an interview date my final chance. That's all right. I'll pass on this one. Thank you so much. That sense of entitlement and arrogancy you're just coming off like a jackass. Like if this is your publicist sending this message, you need to fire your publicist. Because I'm flagging this publicist as spam. So any future clients he's pitching to me is going directly into my spam folder. That was insulting. My final chance? We need to understand that those seeking media and media outlets have a mutually beneficial relationship to work together. For someone to be on my show they get a chance to share their insights with my audience and build trust and rapport with my audience. I'm essentially vouching for anyone who comes on my show as a guest. And the benefit to me is I get content, which helps me do my job, which is serve my audience with the content that they're looking for. That's the mutual benefit. And if you are positioning yourself that you are either the only one who deserves to gain or be that you are gifting a media with your presence. You cannot build any relationship off of that. So no, we're not going to have this individual on as a guest. And uh, I'm stunned, absolutely stunned that a publicist would send a message like that. There are better ways to pitch. There are better ways to build relationships. That's exactly why I created Get Published Live. It's not only to help you learn how to land and leverage media features, whether you're a, a writer, uh, an entrepreneur, a photographer, a creator, a model, to land and leverage media features to amplify your brand awareness and to generate leads. But also, we're going to put you directly in front of magazine editors put you in front of podcast hosts, put you in front of producers where you can build rapport, you can build relationships in person that is available nowhere else. So check it out, getpublishedlive.com. Early Bird is going on right now. You can attend in person in Phoenix, Arizona, May 16th through 19th. Uh, we do have a virtual casting option as well if you can't make it out in person. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you on the next episode. Take care.